So because forces carry both a magnitude, an amount, and a direction, because they can point in different directions, they're vectors, okay, and can be treated as such. So if you have two forces, so let's say we have force 1, and it's a vector, so I'll underline it, okay, which can be written as, let's say, 2, 3 newtons, okay, there is force number 1. And then I also have force number two, uh, which let's say is minus three, uh, four. Okay, now uh, Newtons. Now what's happening? Well, um, I've got, let's say that these two forces are being applied to a particle. Okay, so here is a particle. And what's happening is that it's getting pulled in the direction of 2, 3. So 2, 3. So here's force number 1. 2, 3, like that. And it's also getting pulled uh, in the direction of minus 3, 4. So minus 3, 4. So even higher, so something like that. So there's force number two. OK? So this is the picture. And clearly, if that particle is getting pulled in that direction and pulled in that direction, OK, then you, you'd probably expect that it would end up going in some kind of that kind of direction, right? If it was getting pulled by those two forces. So imagine kind of like um, a lassoing uh, something and then pulling it in two different directions. Like uh, um, a, a ship that's coming into port and it's got two tugboats, okay? Two tugs that are pulling it in two different directions in order for it to travel down the line that it wants, that they want. Okay? So where is it going to go? Well, this is found by getting the resultant vector. And that sounds quite complicated, but really it isn't, OK? The resultant vector is just the sum of the two vectors. So we can work out in which direction that boat's going by just adding the two vectors together. So the resultant force is just the sum of 2, 3 and minus 3, 4, OK? Which is, well, 2 take away 3 is minus 1. 3 plus 4 is 7. And so the resultant is minus 1, 7, which is somewhere up that way. And that's the direction that we probably would have anticipated the boat to be going. So when you're asked to find the resultant vector, and you've got a series of vectors, then you just add them all together and see what you end up with. Now, if all of those forces add up to zero, so if the resultant force is zero, okay, so resultant force is zero, zero vector, okay, then we say that the particle is in equilibrium. Okay, so what that would mean is effectively you can imagine that you have a particle that is being pulled one way, being pulled another way, another way, and another way. And these forces are perhaps all acting with, uh, let's say, two newtons, two newtons, two newtons, two newtons. OK? And subsequently, that particle is going to remain precisely where it is. OK? Uh, because all of those forces are effectively cancelling each other out. So uh, we would say that the particle is in equilibrium. So that is a key bit of understanding that goes along with uh, resultant forces and vectors.